Noise Gates. Noise gates are used to clean up unnecessary noise in your mix, uh, like static or just white noise that you hear when nothing else is playing. It only lets in what you want. Uh, this is a lot easier to do in post-processing. If you do it beforehand, it's going to take some really expensive equipment. Um, and mixers can't do this like they can't do compression. When talking about noise gates, there are four important components that you need to understand. First, we have threshold, then we have attack, then we have hold or minimum opening time as it's sometimes called, and then we have release. Now to help you better understand this, I'm going to draw a graph because it is much easier to visualize it than just to hear it explained. Down here we have time and over here we have volume. And we're going to have an input signal and it's going to be represented by this dotted line. For this example we're going to use the background music to give you an idea of what this sounds like. Now we don't want to set our threshold too high or to block out all the sound below it. We don't want to set it too low because it will let everything in and defeat the purpose of a noise gate. Uh, so for this demonstration we're going to put the threshold through the center here. Now the original input without the threshold is going to sound like this. Now at the points where it crosses the threshold it's going to let in the sound if you've applied a threshold and then cut it back out at the second point and sound like this. So now attack is the amount of time after the input signal passes over the threshold that the gate does not open. So the longer the time, the less sound you're going to hear. Generally for drums, we want to set this pretty low because a, a drum hit is very quick. Now hold is the amount of time after the input signal has passed back, back below the threshold that we still hear the input signal just as it originally was. Now release is the amount of time after the hold that it takes for the signal to get back down to zero decibels. So after we've put all this in Our output signal is going to be down here. It's going to start at zero decibels. It's going to go over here and not actually kick in until the end of the attack time. Then it's going to mimic the original signal and keep mimicking it through the hold. And then during the release time, go back down to zero. So the output signal is going to end up sounding like this. Now this is good for toms because this giant uh, spike right here is going to be your actual tom hit. Down here is going to be like your snare, your hi-hats. Over here your cymbals, and this is all stuff you don't want in your tom mix. You just want that tom hit. And this is the best way to isolate your drums and keep everything out of the mix that you don't want and make it much cleaner. Here I've got a sheet of paper that I'll use to uh, explain or show you how noise gates work. Right now you can see that I'm crinkling the paper, and in between when I speak, you can still hear uh, the paper crackling and things like that. I'm about to replay this clip and I'm going to put, an, if you put an effective noise gate on it, it will cut out the crackling of the paper in between when I'm speaking.
Right now you can see that I'm crinkling the paper. In between when I speak, you can still hear uh, the paper crackling and things like that. I'm about to replay this clip. And I'm going to put, an, if you put an effective noise gate on it, it will cut out the crackling of the paper in between when I'm speaking. Now we use this same idea on drums, uh, specifically in my case for tom mics. I've got five toms on my drum set, <clears throat> and that is five open mics that are going to be picking up all sorts of noise that I don't want. When I hit a crash cymbal, if I'm riding on a crash cymbal, or if I'm playing snare, or, or anything else, I don't want that sound to bleed in through the tom mics because I got five mics and it would just be overpowering. Uh, so what you do is you set a noise gate um, and this isolates the tom sound from everything else that you're playing. Now I don't like to put noise gates on the overhead mics or the snare um, because of the dynamic reason. For overheads, the, the point of overheads, in, in my opinion, is that you want to get an overall picture of what the drums sound like. And for the snare, I don't like to put a noise gate on there because uh, if you do a soft roll or something, you don't want it cutting in and out over the threshold of the noise gate. <coughs> you want it to be a lot clearer. Um, I put noise gates on the two bass mics too. A normal one on the far bass mic, but the close one, I put one with a very, very, very fast release. Um, that way it just gets that, that click sound that helps define the low end uh, boomy sound of the bass drum. Now here is what the drums are going to sound like without the overheads and just the close mics with noise gates applied to them. Now if you go on Wikipedia and you look up noise gates, uh, there's a good explanation there. And, and I read somewhere in that article where it said that the overheads are sort of like the glue that puts everything, all the rest of your drums together. And I really like that analogy. It, it really works. It makes all of the sound blend together and sound like one cohesive instrument uh, instead of a bunch of different separate drums firing on and off like you just heard. Now when we add in the, the overheads, this is what our final drum sound is going to sound like. And there you have it. That's how I record my drums. It's a step-by-step -step process of everything that goes into what I do to make my drums sound how I like them. Now, even if you didn't like the way that my drums sound, I hope that you can use some of the things in this video to help you uh, get the drums sounding like you want them. Um, it's important to remember, again, like I mentioned at the beginning, that I'm not a professional, so don't take my word on all this stuff. I don't have all the answers. And it's also important to remember that this is a very trial and error type thing. You're going to need to try uh, messing with each of the different settings that I've mentioned, you know, EQ, noise gates, reverb, uh, compression, all that stuff. You're going to need to, to keep trying those things and testing them out until you finally tweak uh, the sound to how you like it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'd love to hear any feedback uh, in the comments section below if you have any.